first date is always awkward, but these ones will scar any hopeless romantic for life. You got it? Oh, I got it. You got it. <laughs> Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 awkward movie dates. Oh, coming on my neck? Leave it to me to embarrass myself on a first date. Oh. For this list, we're taking a look at big screen romantic outings that started off fine and dandy until they amounted to that awkward moment. Fred, look, I can Son, go to the prom, we'll deal with it Son, later. Relax. I... You already laid the tracks, that's the hard part. Number 10, I like to wear women's clothes, Ed Wood. <gasps> oh, the spook house. Edward D. Wood Jr. had his fair share of baggage, but few would deny that the director was a passionate, determined, and all around cheerful guy. Oh. We're stuck. When he's stranded on a broken down carnival ride with his future wife, Kathy, Wood decides to divulge his greatest secret. Kathy? I'm about to tell you something that I never told any girl on a first date. His guilty pleasure of cross-dressing. I like to wear women's clothes. While most women would be running for the hills, Kathy decides to accept this delightfully quirky fella for who he is. Okay. It goes to show that sometimes it's best to get everything out in the open on the first date. Number 9. Laundromat Date, Anchorman 2 The Legend Continues It's hard to imagine anyone could possibly be more awkward than Brick Tamlin. The weatherman meets his match in the sequel to Anchorman, however, upon encountering incompetent office worker Chani Lasname. Can I ask you a personal question? Like a five-year-old on the playground, the shy Brick asks Chani to go on a date with him. Can we go to a date? As strange as it sounds, a laundromat is the perfect romantic setting for these empty-headed lovebirds. After downing several sodas, the two engage in their first kiss and throw themselves a pants party. Talk about an upgrade from shoulder touching. Number 8. Hard on the size of Florida, the Fisher King. You'll probably want to come upstairs for some coffee. Harry is a delusional homeless man who lost his wife and his sanity in a shooting. You find some pretty wonderful things in the trash. Lydia is the mousy recluse he's been following without ever directly approaching. You don't have to say that. This scene from The Fisher King strikes the perfect balance between uncomfortable and romantic, as Perry confesses his hard-on for Lydia. I have a hard-on for you the size of Florida. <laughs> Dishing out his feelings, Perry could easily come off as a creepy stalker who needs psychological help. I'm in love with you. Lydia can see in Perry's wide eyes, though, that he's 100% sincere about his affection for her. It's totally bizarre, but sometimes so is love. You're real. <laughs> Aren't you? Number seven, a meaningful relationship, American Psycho. Patrick, it's so elegant. Handsome, sharp, and wealthy, Patrick Bateman might seem like a catch. Little does anyone realize, however, that he's also a chainsaw-wielding psychopath. <laughs> While on a date with his secretary, Jean, Bateman plays with lethal instruments in his apartment. What do you really want to do with your life? As the two casually converse, the audience is convinced the unsuspecting Gene will become Bateman's next victim. What's that? Duct tape. I need it for, uh, taping something. But before he can fire a nail gun at his employee's head, she's saved by an answering machine. Patrick, Patrick, I know you're there. Pick up the phone, you bad boy. Bateman decides to let Jean live, leaving her blissfully unaware of how close she came to certain death. Do you want me to go? Yeah. I don't think I can control myself. Number six, I'm pregnant, knocked up. What do you say, Geisha House, Hollywood, nine o'clock. Uh, sure, sure, that's cool. If you sleep with someone on the first date, be prepared to receive some life-altering news on your second date. I thought maybe we could just talk and get to know each other better. Cool. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll start. In this scene from Knocked Up, 
Allison prepares to inform her flabby-chested one-night stand Ben that there's a bun in her oven. So I have something that I really need to tell you is kind of why I called you. Before dropping the bombshell, she hopes to learn a little more about the father of her baby. She only grows more concerned as Ben prattles on. That really lasted me. I mean, until now. I mean, it's been almost 10 years. I have like 900 bucks left, so that should last me for like... I mean, I'm not a mathematician, but like another two years or some shit. When Allison finally breaks the news, Ben naturally reacts like an immature child. I'm pregnant. Fuck off. What? What? That's why you always wear a condom, kids. I almost had the condom on my dick. It was on the cusp. And then you said, just do it already. I didn't mean do it without a condom. I meant do it, like hurry up. Number five, subtitles, Annie Hall. You know what Grammy Hall would call a real Jew? What if people always told each other exactly what they were thinking on dates? Chances are they'd never speak again. Well, uh, to me, I, don't, I mean, it's, it's, it's all instinctive, you know? I mean, I just try to uh, feel it, you know? I try to get a sense of it and not think about it so much. The romantic leads aren't always upfront with one another in Annie Hall, but the audience gets a glimpse at what's on Alvy's and Annie's minds as they have drinks on a balcony. Yeah, yeah, I sort of dabble around, you know? Through subtitles, the two express their internal insecurities, curiosities, and sexual urges. Photography is interesting because, you know, it's a, it's a new art form and a, a set of aesthetic criteria have not emerged yet. They mask all of these repressed thoughts by uneasily discussing photography. It's a funny and clever commentary on how all conversations carry subtext, even small talk. You know what? Got to get there and begin whining soon, <laughs> otherwise. I... <laughs> hey, are you busy Friday night? Me? Oh, uh, no. Number four, Marge and Mike, Fargo. Mike? <laughs> Marge? The Coen brothers are masters of uncomfortable comedy, as represented in this scene from Fargo. Oh, this is a nice place. Yeah, you know, it's a Radisson, so it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. The very pregnant Marge Gunderson thinks she's going out to a friendly dinner with her high school chum, Mike Yanagita. Well, what about you, Mike? Are you married? But the lonely Mike has other intentions. You mind if I sit over here? Uh, I was married to Linda Cooksey. No, why don't you sit over there? I prefer that. Huh? Oh. Oh, uh, okay. Margie is too kind to flat out shoot Mike down. As he invades her comfort zone, though, she tries to gracefully slip out. Well, I always liked you. I Mike. always liked you so much. So, Mike, uh, should we get together another time, you think? No, I, I... Things only get more awkward as Mike breaks down in tears over his pathetic life, which he's been lying about to Margie this whole time. I been so lonely. <laughs> it's okay, Mike. Number three, Frank and Beans, there's something about Mary. Are you going to the prom? Huh? When Ted scores Mary as a prom date, it seems too good to be true. You and me, like we could go together, the two of us. Yet everything that can possibly go wrong for the braces-faced teenager does go horribly wrong as he's beaten by Mary's mentally challenged brother, mistaken for a peeper, and suffers an accident with his zipper. Ow! If you assume matters can't get any more humiliating from there, think again. Is it to Frank or the Beans? Ted gets a second shot with his dream girl 13 years later. But that date takes an equally awkward turn after an incident with some <clears throat> hair gel. Is that... Is that hair gel? Number two, mother-son bonding, back to the future. Do you mind if we park for a while? Taking your own mother to the school dance is one thing. Having your mother come on to you at the school dance is quite another. Marty, I'm almost 18 years old. It's not like I've never parked before. Trapped in 1955, Marty McFly finds himself at the Enchantment Under the Sea dance with the teenage version of his mom. Lorraine, Lorraine, what are you doing? As part of a ruse to bring his parents together, the nervous Marty needs to make a move on her. You shouldn't drink. Why not? Because you, you might regret it. But before he can work up the courage, his frisky date lands one right on her future son's lips. Immediately, she finds something isn't right. Thank God they didn't go any further. This is all wrong. I, I don't know what it is, but when I kiss you, it 
It's like I'm kissing my brother. I guess that doesn't make any sense, does it? Believe me, it makes perfect sense. Before we kiss our top pick goodnight, here are a few honorable mentions. Good evening. Hello. How are you, sir? Good evening, Mr. Gladstone. Hello again. I'll see if the penis knows any. I mean, the, the pianist. Uh, the guy playing the piano. So you're breaking up with me because I'm too... blonde? No, that, that's not entirely true. Stop. Here, feel this. 100% pashmina. Well, at least that's what the guy in the street Come told on, me. Then. Wow, that is soft. Well, you know, I... And I want a baby now. I'm 37. Too much for a first date, isn't it? Number one, cinema date, taxi driver. All Travis Bickle wants is to make a connection with another human being and to serve a purpose. Got a present. Ah! However, he just doesn't know how to function in this world. You gotta be kidding. What? This is a dirty movie. The audience begins to see just how socially inept Travis is when he takes his love interest Betsy to a movie. No, no, this this is a, this is a movie that uh, a lot of couples come to. All kinds of couples go here. Not your typical date movie, but a Swedish sex education film. As you might expect, Betsy is not impressed. It's not so bad. This Taking film, me to a place like this is about as exciting to me as saying that's. The further she pushes Travis away, the further he descends into madness as this unstable taxi driver attempts to find his place. Can I talk to you at least? I mean, won't you at least talk to me? I didn't know you. Look, won't you take the record? I've already got it. But please, please, I bought it for you, Betsy. It's now good too. Let's go. Can I call you? Do you agree with our list? Oh, nothing, Not no. What movie dates made you cringe? Just a little of the old in and out. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. So here's to a um, here's to a wonderful evening.